Right, okay, so we've got a um, engine warning code on the Citroen Saxo here. So um, I've got myself a uh, fault code reader. It's like a standard one, you can pick them off um, eBay for like tenner or less than a tenner. Uh, on, on the Saxo, what you need to do, there's a little um, a kind of cubby hole type thing under here. You just remove that out and then you've got you've basically got this you need to obd2 yeah you need to put this on on this here go okay, on. So just plug it in make sure you get a decent connection as well so you have to do the first two clicks on the um, ignition and press um, enter the enter button and what it'll do is it goes through a kind of a cycle of codes here so it'll um it's just kind of literally skipping through all of the different codes Um, and what it can say there is it says DC, DTC, and there was one basically, this means there's one error on that previous screen. So you click enter and it goes fault one, and then you can see it says that you click enter again and it says P0420. So each of these codes are standard codes, and so you just look um, in the book, it gives you a, a book. We're looking for P420, which is catalyst efficiency below threshold bank one. So that means, most probably, the catalyst needs to be changed. And that's basically how you use them. If you've got more than one fault, you can cycle through and press enter again, and you'll get through it. And there's also functionality to actually clear the code as well. And that's all explained in the book as well. Okay, so here are the parts that we have for the uh, new uh, cat. Uh, so this is the catalyst converter itself for the uh, VTR Saxo, that's uh, brand new. Uh, one thing that happens is when we try to take off the cap is um, one of these uh, nuts on here, um, basically as we took it off, it stripped the thread halfway up the bolt, which is kind of strange thing to happen, but I think it was just so corroded. So I bought a new manifold, 15 quid from eBay from some second hand car. Uh, a new old one. A new old one. And then um, came with this gasket, that's obviously toast. So we had um, all of these uh, gone to the shop, got some uh, new gaskets. So this is the one from there. And I'll talk you through the uh, part numbers as we, as we put them on, but it's a whole raft of fixtures and fittings, but this is one of the key ones you want to get right because that's going to seal from the, this is the bottom of the manifold here to the um, top of the cat essentially. So now we just need to go about um, taking our thing off. One thing I'm going to do is, uh, is clean up this surface because you want this gasket to make nicely so one thing I'm going to do is just come in and uh, with a little knife here and just scrape off all the old bits of gasket just go around the whole of it and uh, some of it's better than, than others just go around like that and then just make sure it's a nice surface underneath the car you can see here's the um, four bolts one two and then the other side there's one up there three four all uh, blow the cat so just unwinding them then I'm going to need to uh, undo these two bolts here and then uh, we should be able to take the cat off but I know we're not going to take the cat off fully because one of these bolts up here uh, the thread stripped so I'm probably going to probably leave it on one bolt but at least that will mean I can move the cat around a bit and maybe have an easier time taking it off so I'm just going to work on those other bolts um, I'm also going to undo this, which is a 22mm, um, which is the secondary lambda sensor, and then uh, I'm going to work on the top of the car afterwards. It's worth saying that these two, uh, there's two 11mm bolts here and here. Once you take them off, you can take out the little heat shield which uh, guards the uh, oil filter. So, uh, and then it leaves two 13 mil bolts, and the rest of them are all 13 mil bolts. So, if you don't have the heat shield in place, then you probably just notice there's just 13 mil. The manifold off, you need to remove the heat shield. Now, this is probably rusted bolts on, as I'm finding here. I think they're going to be 10 mil, but these are so corroded they're um, going down to nine. So, the idea behind it is you just get a uh, single hex socket, whack it on with um, a hammer, and then um, you can go about trying to loosen it off. Coming out now. Um, coming out a bit jaunty. 
And then what you have to do is get um, to get it out of the socket. Or quite often you need to uh, put it on a punch, or even put it in a vice, and then punch the. Uh, so you can use the socket again. So that's pretty knackered. So then I'll just take the other two off at the back. So there's four in total, and then take that off. I've taken the heat shield out. So that's now loose, and I need to take the um, the lambda sensor out. Um, usually you would just. Um, undo this maybe and if you, I don't know, you might not be able to get over but you'd usually try and use the full ring but here you can't really so you have to kind of get as low as possible to it and then just break it off I've already undone this one so it's actually quite loose I mean, usually if all the bolts were playing fair then you wouldn't even have to take the manifold off but because of you know, the bolts are all knackered, we have to come to do that. So, put that out of the way. The heat shield's off. And then we can start playing with these manifold bolts. So, um, they look like they've been on there since the factory put them on. So, I'm going to get some WD-14 to chuck that on there. Usually with uh, bolts that are kind of tired and rusty, um, the problem is trying to get them off. So, you always want to use a single hex um, socket. Um, and then you want to uh, come in here and say, for example, for this one, you want to try and uh, shock it off. So you, if you put it up here, and then you put some tension on it, and then you can sh shock it off, and then you can get in there. So you can get the, these all off as so. There's uh, four on the top and four at the bottom. So there's two underneath here, eight total. So just go around and loosen all the bolts off, but make sure you soak them properly in WD-40 first to try and get them off. We've undone all the bolts, we can just do the uh, taking out of this business. It seems to me that you could have probably done this without undoing the, the bolts at the bottom there, but it's done now, so there we go. There it is in all of its glory. Uh, one thing that I didn't really mention is that I actually to undo there's a bolt that goes and holds it to the side of the engine there and that is uh, this bolt here that's um, an allen key so you need to get an allen key in there but I actually found the shoving bolt on top of it and I'm doing it was actually better for me so that's what I've done so that's out now we can start putting the new one back in so this is the, uh, the new cat you can see it travels the same distance but um, happens to be a shorter cat probably because it's a cheap one and then this is the manifold and I had all types of problems with this other one here, namely that one of them snapped and one of them, the bolt, uh, wouldn't go past there, so all of that's knackered, so it was easy just to put 15 quid and get a new manifold. So here it is, even came with a lambda, which is good news, and uh, yeah, I'm just going to throw it in now. So the first thing I'm going to do, or the first thing that's been done is um, clean up all the threads, so you want them nice and clean get some copper slip on them so next time we won't have so much hassle and then um, chuck some of this just to ease it on put them on there and then put it in the car I've just done a little bit of prep um, so what we've done is we've copper slipped from each of these um, you can see so these are meant to be studs that you put nuts on but eventually they can get stuck so they end up as basically bolts because the uh, nut is stuck on the stud but whatever. Copper slip these, copper slip these, copper slip these, copper slip this, these points here for the cat. Got a razor blade and just going over there just making sure that each of these surfaces is clean. And then um, another thing, these these get coked up so what you can do is you can just just go like that and just get rid of the little coke build up. Um, you could argue that it might add a little bit of performance, probably not, you know. I've got it off now, so it was easy to do. Okay, the lambda sensor's already in, um, so it's 22 mil to put that in. And it's coming here, and we can just, the gasket's obviously already in as well. And then that's it. So that's in there like that, and we just need to um, use each of these, um, and then just um, wind each of these bolts in and then I'll show you that and that's all tight but we've got to use these washers as well so basically what it goes is like this washer on first then the nut or if you're in a situation whereby 
うんそ,そうね Beautiful in a situation whereby that's happened, so it's already one piece if you like. So you just stick that in here, as so, and just wind that in. And just make sure you started on all the threads of all the bolts to begin with, and then um, and then uh, then tighten everything up. So we've tightened up each of the manifold bolts in a crisscross pattern. I even had to go as far as um, using a tap and die set to get a better thread inside the aluminium blocks, it must have had some crap in it or whatever. Then it's time to put the uh, heat shield on. So uh, just wind that in there. As I said, the uh, lander sensor is already in there. So now like that. And then we can get the little bolts. And we'll just grab a little bit of copper slip, put them in there, and there's one, two, three, four uh, little bolts to just screw them in. So fitting the new lambda to the loom is really easy, you're just putting it in there, like this, and then do that. So now it's time to fit the um, cat, and with the new, this is the uh, Euro car parts part, it's probably not the Peugeot part, so the uh, section part. Okay, take this off here, like so, grab that. Okay, and then... Um, Right, so now we're ready to go underneath the car and fit this thing up. So this one needs to go on first, so I'll probably have to just put that up here as so. Get that on. Get someone to hold it for you. Oh. And we grab Annie to hold it for you. And then uh, grab the cap. And shove it on. Okay, and then Put the four bolts in. There's one this side as well. Okay. You leave a little bit of slack on there. going on. Then uh, I might be best place to do the last one. The last one's out here. So you can see just up in here. Bit of a squeeze. So as I was saying before, this uh, here fits up onto the side of the block there. Get this little allen bolt, which looks like this. And you just thread that up into, into this bolt hole here. Won't be able to do that with uh, one hand though, so I'll pass over the camera. The bolt, and this is my setup. I've got the um, allen in the side, and I've got the, uh, the ratchet spanner so uh, it's going to be impossible to show you that, but that's how I'm going to go about getting this uh, side mount in. So now I'm going to put the after cap lambda sensor in. My top tip is turn it anti-clockwise a couple of turns and stick it in the hole. And then as you unwind, as you wind it in, the uh, the winds you put on the cable obviously unturn, and then it's um, you're not going to put any extra tension on the cable, so just place it in here. And then you see that there's no more winds on the cable, the cable's uh, straight. And then just grab the 22, you've got the lambda's always 22, it seems. Just do that up like, like so. And then when you uh, do it up, don't go crazy. Over tighten it, and that's it. We just need to go back here. So to take off the old 
um, o-ring uh, you can just get in behind here and just uh, pull that off like so and get the nice shiny new one just put it in place you should just be able to rotate it in Bosch then you can uh, put that up in here and then get the hardware to actually uh, mount that together which I'll grab now so just attach these bolts the little spring bolts you can see there's one there and one above if you can't quite see there you go and uh, it's got the new uh, donut gasket which is in here um, the bolt that I mentioned first that holds it to the engine and the, the lambda that's everything in place the other thing is the little uh, heat shield um, so the weld snaps so we just put a nut through it but it's the same thing so it just, just goes on here And uh, then that's it, that's the full thing. Now I'm going to start the engine. And uh, there's two things here. One, see if it's leaking. So we should be able to duck down. I mean, you'd hear it leaking probably from the manifold, but duck down, have a look there. See if it's leaking out here. Another thing you can do. Go on. Right, and, and is the code clear? No, no, no. So the code's not clear. What you need to do... So we'll clear the code. Okay. Yeah, it's on two clicks. Yeah. Then you press enter. Yeah. It finds its protocol. So it'll just do its reading first. See, so it's got one error. Yeah. Press enter. Press enter again. That's just the same okay, that's one. that's the same. Press enter. So that's the one. Is it, it's the code for it, it's the same one. Then, then it's scroll down to the second... Erase. So you press scroll to go down to the second option. Click erase. And then it's yep. uh, enter for yes. Erase done. Okay. Okay. So Let's now... Pull that out. To... Okay. It's good to me. It's gone. Okay, but then we just uh, obviously driving it will be the yeah the proof of the pudding. But, but, but basically, what happens the last time is I got rid of the error code without doing anything mechanical to the car, and it went for a bit of time, and then it came back on. So we'll do a little drive and see if it still appears. Okay. 